Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. So I've recently came across this very interesting article in which the particular bug bounty hunter showed an awesome way to, you know, bypass the host error injection weak protection and that can straight away lead to account takeover vulnerability and that resulted in a four digit bounty. So in this video, we'll try to cover that particular vulnerability, how he was able to bypass that. Also, we'll try to see that why exactly this happens. And then we'll try to understand that how, you know, uh, we can find this in real world applications. We're going to see everything through a practical demonstration. But as always, before going into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video, in which I have talked about web cache deception and how we can find web cache deception in web applications, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen. And now, without further ado, let us get started. Now, let us go ahead and try to understand about this vulnerability in depth. Okay, and for that, I have created this very small application that's going to simulate that same vulnerability. And we'll try to understand that, you know, how we can do host header injection vulnerabilities in scenarios where we have, you know, weak protection for, uh, you know, mitigating the host header injection vulnerabilities. Okay, so we have this application over here. And you can see in this, we have about three functionalities, the login functionality, uh, the registration functionality and the forgot password functionality, right? So obviously, we'll be going to check the forgot password functionality because this is where the email is going to get sent, right? And this is where the possibilities of account takeover lies the most, right? So if you can like, let's say brute force the OTP, uh, let's say you, if you're able to crack the link, uh, the reset link, or let's say if you're able to do a host header injection over here, then it's going to be the best scenario possible for you right so we can simply go ahead and open this link right let's do that and you can see this is how it is uh, presenting itself so we need to like enter our email address and then we need to click on this send reset link right so let me just quickly go ahead and open my temporary email over here and let's copy this uh, let's paste it over here as well and then just before sending this reset link, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to intercept the request and send this to repeater. Okay, and then we're going to analyze it further later on. Let me just forward this now. Wait for a few seconds. And you can say it says password resets email sent successfully without any issues. Let's go here and you can see we've got the reset password link, right? Let's go ahead. And you can see this is the link we have got, right? HTTP ato.bpractical.tech slash reset and slash this particular hash, right? Which is how you will see uh, uh, a reset link in many live applications as well, right? It's going to follow a similar kind of pattern, right? And when you are going to click on it, you will be, you know, asked to provide a new credential and then your new credential can be used to log in into your account instead of the previous one that you have set, right? Let me just go back now from here back to the list and over here let's go to repeater and let's try to understand this uh, you know request body so if you take a closer look you can see the host header is set to ato.bpractical.tech which was the exact you know host present in the link right like if we go to the link uh let me just click on view here show you guys again you can see it is ato.bpractical.tech so now this should alert you that you know you should think that okay there is a possibility that maybe they're using this host header value to you know generate the link which can be a bad implementation right why because you know the attacker can provide their own host header inside this value and if it's is going to be replaced by the actual value this it can be quite dangerous right so what i'm going to do is to verify my my theory i'm simply going to remove ato and i'm going to you know use any other subdomains of bpractical.tech like for example let's say uh, testing one two three just for this example and then we're going to see whether this value is also going to reflect in the link of the reset password or not okay so let's go ahead and do that let's click on send and you can see again it says password reset email send let's go to browser here let's go back and let's wait for a few seconds yeah again we've got the link let's click on view 
And here we are, if you take a closer look, this time the value has been replaced from abc.bpractical.tech to testing123.bpractical.tech, which is a clear indication that whatever we are providing here might be or surely be going to reflect in the body, right? The first thing you can also try is that if you are encountering with an application like this, maybe you can try for some HTML injection, it, it might work, right? So I'm not going to do that, but here we are going to focus on uh, the the host header injection vulnerability right so simply once we have confirmed that let's go ahead and try to put you know like attacker.com or any other domain that is apart from you know be practical dot tech let's do attacker.com let's click on send okay so you can see clearly we have been blocked right it says invalid host header so now the application might be you know blocking any other domain apart from bpractical.tech we can also confirm that like let's say instead of bpractical.tech let's provide uh, bpractical.com just for the example and again you can see it says 400 bad requests right now in this scenario what exactly mainly happens is that most of the bug bounty hunters like move from host and injection vulnerability to some other vulnerabilities right but this is where the actual game happens okay so if you are ever encountering with an application like this, it would be worth to try the colon symbol followed by the actual domain. It might be able to, you know, bypass the restriction if they have, you know, like allowed this uh, colon prefix into their application, which is exactly what happened with this particular article, which is given in the link, uh, sorry, given in the uh, comment section as well. So definitely you can go ahead and check it out. But this is exactly what we're going to do now. And let's see how it's going to work. Okay. So let's go ahead and type uh, attacker.com. Okay. Again, we know that it's going to like give us 400. And then we're going to add a colon. And then we're going to type B practical.tech. So technically, if the application was checking, you know, uh, the last value of the of the the input then definitely they're going to confirm that okay it's ending with bpractical.tech and the initial filtration is going to take this as the subdomain which is not the case here okay and if they have added some prefix like this uh, which is going to omit or eliminate this value we will be able to do something really crazy okay so let's click on send request and let's see what happens wait for a few seconds and you can see this time it says password reset email sent successfully. Let's go ahead and check our mail server. Let's wait for a few seconds. And again, we've got an email, right? And you can see this time, instead of bpractical.tech, we've got attacker.com, which is exactly what happened with the scenario of this bug bounty hunter who was able to find this vulnerability. And now once we have confirmed this, we have successfully found a host header injection vulnerability that can lead to account takeover. Not only that, we can also try some various other methods to, you know, perform uh, uh, what you can say, uh, vulnerabilities like this, okay, like host header injection vulnerability. Like another example, what you can do is like, uh, instead of bpractical.tech, you can type something like test-bpractical.tech. If the application was vulnerable, you will be able to do that as well okay so you can see in this example as well the password reset has been set however it is important to know note that this is a complete different domain right let me just show you like if we go back here uh seconds yeah again you can see we've got a different target test dash b practical dot tech is a different domain from b practical dot tech so again it will be considered as a valid host header injection vulnerabilities right so these are some of the ways that you can use to you know bypass weak host header injection you know protection mechanism and can lead that can lead to you know account takeover vulnerabilities i hope you are able to understand how we can do this if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also if you want to read more about this article by this awesome bug bounty hunter then go ahead and check it out the link of that article is also given in the pinned comment so definitely feel free to check it out you'll be able to understand everything in you know in a better way as well as you'll be, you'll be able to understand what exactly caused this issue from the teams or from the developer side right and now with that being said Keep learning, keep hacking and thank you so much for watching this video.